What's up YouTube, welcome back to Celio's Network, the channel dedicated to providing you with competitive Pokemon TCG content. Today we're looking at Zorak Decidueye Alolan Ninetales GX using the new Alolan Ninetales GX from Lost Thunder. Uh, this deck uh, has originally gotten hyped by Rukan Shao's article over on Poke Beach. Uh, my list is fairly different than his, I'd say probably about 50 out of 60 cards similar but archetypes usually have a fair amount of cards similar so by all means don't think this is his list like i said i made some uh pretty big changes to the engine of this deck and how you get your pokemon out and whatnot so we're going to be starting out with ditto prism star uh one of the best if not the best card out of lost thunder uh, it can evolve into any stage one, so it's basically your fourth Zerua, Rallet, and Vulpix. Next, we have a 3 3 line of Zorak GX. Uh, it's here for its tradeability and because it's a great attacker for just the DCE. You can do 120 with a full bench, 150 with a choice band and a full bench, and then a, a feather arrow from Decidueye makes that 170. Another feather, another feather arrow makes it 190. So this is one of our main attackers and also our uh, draw support. And then we have three to Alola Ninetales GX. Um, I don't think th you could run three, um, but I very rarely ever need a third. Um, sometimes I don't even need a second. So uh, Alone Vulpix is also worth talking about, very much so, because Beacon's a great attack for free. Search your deck for up to two Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand. So uh, leading with Vulpix is best if you are going second, you can Beacon. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I don't always get out multiple Alone Ninetales, at least in the early and mid game, is because if I lead with Alone Vulpix to Beacon, usually that'll get knocked out. Uh, and I'll evolve one of my Vulpix on the bench if I have one. Uh, if I have a good setup, I will have one. Um, so Alone Ninetales GX, when you evolve, you can search your deck for up to two item cards and put them to your hand. This is really great with Decidueye, and that's what allows us to run this 303 line of Decidueye with her candy. <clears throat> and this deck uh, consistently sets up one to two Decidueye turn two. So that's really, really nice. Um, so the Mysterious Guidance also allows us to run lower counts of items and be able to find them in a pinch when we might need them. Uh, Snowy Wind Ability for Fairy and Colorless, 70 and 30 to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So that 30, 70 uh, damage spread has nice synergy with Feather Arrow as well. So if you Feather Arrow a 70 HP basic on the bench twice, then you can finish it up with Snowy Winds 30 on the bench. Um, so you can take multiple knockouts in one turn with Snowy Wind and Feather Arrow. And then Sublimation GX is of course amazing because it knocks out an Ultra Beast. If your opponent's active Pokemon is an Ultra Beast, it is knocked out for the same cost as Snowy Wind, Fairy, and Colorless. Uh, this is notably really good against Blacephalon, but Obviously, you can use it against any Ultra Beast you choose to. Next, we have the 3-3 Rowlet Decidueye line. Um, so Decidueye, 240 HP, absolute tank of a Pokemon. Its Feather Arrow ability is why it's here. Once during your turn, you may put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. Um, having two of these set up is just... It, it's insane. Like, an extra 40 damage wherever you want it every turn is... It, it's... Uh, it's incomparable like there's no other Pokemon that can do something like this put just 40 damage wherever you want in addition to your attacks uh, it allows you to take prizes mid turn it allows you to finish up a kill the following turn unlike things like Kakui which adds damage this turn but with Decidueye you can allocate it exactly where you need it clean it up next turn if you missed a KO the, the turn before set up for uh, set up Pokemon on the bench for future turns uh, the possibilities are pretty endless with Feather Arrow. Then we have Razor Leaf for a Vanilla 90, which we won't be using too much, but we do have the energy to use it if we want. And Hollow Hunt is a great other GX attack if we're not going to use uh, Trickster with two rainbows on it or uh, a little Nine Tails Sublimation GX to knock out an Ultra Beast. Hollow Hunt can put any three cards from your discard pile into your hand. 
Uh, this is nice for getting back one of cards like Max Potion and Acerola. And even some energy if you're playing against an energy denial sort of deck. And then we're playing two Tapu Lele GX for its Wonder Tag ability, but you can use Energy Drive, of course, since we are running double colorless energy in here. So we have 20 Pokemon. 12 of those Pokemon are basics, and 10 of them are basics that you don't mind starting with, where two are the other two are Lele. Um, yeah, I, I really don't like benching Lele's, uh, especially multiple. So, like, if you start Lele, you have to bench the other Lele for your starting supporter. That really sucks. But we play two in case one's prized uh, because popping off on turn one allows you to uh, either draw a lot of cards with Lily or in uh, different situations you can use Elm. But my deck is built more towards using Lily. So that's it for the Pokemon. We're going to go on to the trainers now. We got one counter catcher. Uh, like I was saying earlier, you like to lead with Volpix and use Beacon. So if they go ahead one prize, you can use counter catcher. Uh, you'll be able to search it out most times on your uh, turn after Beacon because you are going to Beacon for a little nine tail. So you can search out any two items you want. One of those might be a counter catcher. Uh, we have three Great Ball, four Nest Ball, and four Ultra Ball. So 11 Ball Search. Uh, three, seven of them you don't have to discard cards for, which is really great. Um, and that is because of the Lily Ball Search Engine that we're using to uh, primarily get our Pokemon out early. And then, you know, Ultra Ball and Great Ball are good all game long, but Nest Ball is really good turn one, maybe sometimes turn two. Uh, we're playing the one Max Pot, which I mentioned earlier, to heal all damage from one of your Pokemon. Uh, if you have to leave a Decidueye out, Maybe they hit into it. Maybe they are spreading damage themselves. Uh, or you can just max pot a Zorak that you attacked with last turn and replace the energy. You're playing three if you magic correctly. Uh, it could be some good plays there. Uh, then we're playing three rare candy. So that's our only way to get our Decidueyes out. So uh, these are, it's kind of like a three, three, three line of Rowlet Decidueye rare candy. So we have just enough to get all Decidueye out, but most games you'll get one or two. Two is the ideal, three would be amazing if possible, but there's also usually not enough board space for that because you need Zorks to draw and attack with. Um, sometimes a Lele to get a supporter earlier and then a little Ninetales to get your items. Um, but this allows you to uh, evolve straight from basic to stage two. We have one Rescue Stretcher. Um, Really, this is just to get back at Pokemon that's important in a certain matchup. Maybe if that Vulpix got KO'd, like I said, after Beacon, you get back the Vulpix, rebench it, so you can use a second little Ninetales later on. Um, really, depending on how this specific game is going, what you're getting back with Rescue Stretcher. Um, one Acerola. We're doing one Acerola, one Max Pot, and I think that's a fine split. We don't really have room for multiple Acerola and Pal Pad in here, in my opinion, which would be really great, but most of the time just healing one time does the trick because we're trying to take prizes aggressively after we get our setup established. We have, for draw supporters, three Cynthia, and just yesterday I changed from four Lily to three Lily and one Elm. Um, I'm using Lily as my main turn one supporter to get the Nest Balls and Great Ball and Ultra Ball going and get our board fully established and ready for next turn. Uh, but there are turns where I'll start off with like, let's say a Vulpix active, a Zerua in hand, a Rowlet in hand, and a Rare Candy. So, and maybe a Decidueye. So I can't empty my hand fully. I already have Candy Decidueye, so I don't want to use Cynthia, but Lily will only get me a few cards. So Elm is better uh, because I can just Lele and Elm for three more basic Pokemon, put them on my bench. Um, so for the situations where Elm is better because we already have the Candy Decidueye or the Energy or Supporter for next turn in our hand, then we have Elm as an option if we have Ultra Ball or Lele. But most games I've been going with Lily, so that's why I have been going between 3 and 4 Lily in the deck. Uh, Cynthia is obviously better late game because, well, mid to late game, because if you're uh, drawing with Zorax Trade, then your hand's going to be a little bigger, so Lily's not always going to draw you many cards, if any. Um, but yeah, Cynthia is your supporter of choice, usually mid to late game, if you're not playing Guzma or Acerola. 
I uh, mentioned the one Professor Elms, which is a new Lost Thunder supporter. Search your deck for up to three Pokemon with 60 HP or less. Reveal them, put them into your hand. So you can get any basic Pokemon we're playing here aside from Tapu Lele GX. We're playing two Choice Band and one Counter Gain. Two Choice Band is usually enough. Like I said, we can search things out with Alone Nine Tails if we ever needed it back, potentially getting it back with Hollow Hunt. And the one Counter Gain is usually fine. If you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent, the attacks of this Pokemon, the Pokemon that this card is attached to, cost one colorless less. This is usually used to attack with Snowy Wind for just a single energy or attack with Sublimation GX for just a single energy. Those are really huge swing turns when you get to use that. And it's a one of item that you can search out with Alone Nine Ninetales Mysterious Guidance. And a skateboard is actually really, really great in this deck because you can Mysterious Guidance it out and attach it to something like a Rallet or a Zerua or even a Volpix that's in the active spot and retreat for free to get into your attacker then evolve that pokemon when it might have a higher retreat cost like zorak does and decidueye does actually all of our stage ones have more than one retreat cost so you want to put it on the pokemon when it's uh basic get it out of there or sometimes you'll just put it on a Lele so you have a free retreater when something gets knocked out so that's it for the trainers we do have a pretty big variety of trainers in here like i said i switched between the four lily to three lily one elm i think i like that the opportunity of elm the possibility of playing it but the deck is built with a ball search engine plus lily then for energy we're playing nine we have three double colorless energy three rainbow energy and three fairy energy so our main attackers are zorak and nine tails um the DCE can be used for Zorix Rise Speeding or for the Colorless of Snowy Wind and Sublimation GX. Also be used for uh, Razor Leaf and Energy Drive. And then the Rainbow and the Fairy. The Rainbow could be used for Trickster. Mostly it'll be used for Snowy Wind and every now and again it's used for Hollow Hunt or Razor Leaf. And then of course the Fairy Energy is just for Alone Ninetales. So this is the Zorak Alone Nine Tails Decidueye deck I've been testing. It's one of my favorite decks right now. I think it's tier one. You can play it uh, with more Elms and no Lily. Uh, you can put in a lot of other neat techs with the spaces because you don't run the four nest balls and you can you don't have to run great balls with it. Um, so the deck would be built a little differently then. This is just, I want to get as many Pokemon down turn one as I can, fill up my hand with Lily, and hopefully get the Nine Tails double candy for two Decidueye turn two. That's the goal here, and then you start smacking with Riotous Beating with Feather Arrow damage as needed. Uh, this deck is really strong, it can hold its own against most things. Um, people have been saying it's not great against Blacephalon. I think it's really close against Blacephalon. I've, I was actually testing that matchup right before making this video. Um, it's pretty back and forth depending on, um, if Blacephalon gets the first KO, if Ninetales gets the first KO with Sublimation. Going first matters sometimes, but you can always come back with counter gain. Um, so yeah, try to stick out for yourself, guys. I just wanted to provide this list for you. Uh, here on the YouTube channel since I've been playing it a lot over on Twitch. If you're interested in seeing me play some games with this deck and other things that I profile on the channel, try to tune into a stream sometime. Uh, my schedule isn't set. I usually try to uh, tweet out how I'm going to be streaming for the next week on Twitter, so make sure you follow me on there and Twitch. Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all of your trading card game needs from singles to sealed products to sleeves and deck boxes. And use my code CELIO, all caps, for 10% off of your next order there. That's $10 or more. That's it for today, guys. I'll see you next time here on CELIO's Network.